Hi, VancouverWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday, March 2nd. A very strong cold front is working its way through the I-95 corridor this morning. There can be some very strong wind gusts over the next few hours, perhaps up to 45 or even 50 miles per hour or so. Very strong pressure rise behind this surface frontal system until the pressure tends to stabilize in the midday and afternoon hours we can get these very strong wind gusts up to 45 or 50 miles per hour or so. This uh, all is in association with the influx of a much colder air mass relative to the last few days. It'll stay cold tomorrow ahead of uh, a snow event for Thursday night and Friday. Certainly can be some accumulating snow in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City by the time the Friday morning commute rolls around and then there's another system to follow for the latter part of the week and perhaps Saturday night or so there can be another round of snow or snow showers from a clipper system that will drop southeastward from the northern plains uh, across the Great Lakes and into the mid-Atlantic region during the middle part of the weekend and we'll focus in on these snow threats over the next few minutes. First however let's focus in on the possibility of some damaging wind gusts over the next few hours we're looking here at surface analysis map. A couple things I want to point out. First of all, the radar echoes are pretty much off the East Coast now. The threat of rain is uh, over with in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. The actual surface front itself is in this region right, uh, right along the East Coast right now, as depicted here by the kink in the isobar pattern. The isobar is shown on this particular map in black here. The red lines represent the greatest pressure change over the last two hours and what we're seeing here is a, uh, the highest pressure rise over the last two hours are centered right here across central and eastern part of Pennsylvania all the way down to the DC metro region and from this area right here all the way to the surface cold front itself that's where the strongest wind gusts are occurring and will occur over the next few hours so until the pressure stabilizes in your particular area midday or afternoon there can be some damaging wind gusts up to 45 or 50 miles per hour or so a very strong surge of a pressure uh, rise immediately behind this surface cold front adds to the possibility of some uh, damaging wind gusts over the next few hours from DC to Philadelphia to New York City well, in terms of cloud cover, let's take a look at the latest visible uh, GOES satellite imagery loop from the Penn State Ewall site. Most of the clouds and rainfall, again, off to the east here of the I-95 Carter region. Some clearing already working its way into D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Certainly, it'll uh, remain a partly to mostly sunny day, but those wind gusts will continue, especially during the morning hours with 45 miles per hour or so possible over the next few hours. Still windy this afternoon, but not quite as strong as what we'll experience over the next few hours. Well, let's now focus in on the snow threats coming. And again, there's actually two threats coming. Accumulating snow is quite likely tomorrow night, Thursday night, into Friday, certainly in time for the Friday morning commute. And then there's a clipper system that we'll have to follow over the weekend that could throw some snow or snow showers into the I-95 car around the Saturday night time frame. This is the forecast map from last night's Zero Z GFS model run for tomorrow morning, Thursday morning. By this time, high pressure will be situated across southeastern Canada and south central Canada, and all that will be pouring cold air down the east side of the Appalachians. Quite cold for this time of the year. Low temperatures tomorrow morning should drop to 20 to 25 degrees in the I-95 corridor. It'll start off sunny, but then clouds will increase in the latter part of the day as moisture streams eastward across the Ohio Valley. Now, the situation is this. A low pressure area will drop into the Ohio Valley, tend to weaken, and then a secondary low pressure area will form off the mid-Atlantic coastline and pull to the north and east come Friday morning into the midday on Friday. So kind of a a transfer of energy from an Ohio Valley low to the uh, uh, mid-Atlantic coastline in the Thursday night Friday time frame. So again, the clouds should increase late in the day tomorrow. Let's now jump ahead 12 hours. And here's the forecast map for tomorrow evening by last night's Zero Z GFS model run. <coughs> Precipitation pushing rapidly to the east here, most likely in the form of snow in the immediate I-95 corridor region and points to the north and west. 
Certainly there can be some rain mixed in south and east of the I-95 corridor region uh, during uh, the nighttime tomorrow night into the day on Friday. But notice here that jump already from a Ohio Valley low pressure to a second low pressure area dropping down to the southeast. So there's really a dual a low pressure pattern at this time. One maybe down in the southeastern U.S. and one up here over the Ohio Valley. Again, moisture streams in rapidly. It could be snowing as early as 7, 8, 9 o'clock tomorrow night in parts of the I-95 corridor. Now here's the forecast map for Friday morning. By this time, that Ohio Valley low pressure area pretty much dissipates. However, the GFS keeps that northern stream of energy pretty active, pretty healthy, and that allows for some decent snowfall all the way across Pennsylvania into New Jersey during the night tomorrow night into Friday morning. By Friday morning, <coughs> excuse me, the main low pressure area now is situated just off the mid-Atlantic coastline and it'll start to pull to the north and east. Now here's the forecast for Friday evening. By this time that low pressure area intensifies quite dramatically during the day on Friday and pulls to the north and east. It ends up producing quite a bit of precipitation associated with this low pressure area and all it would take is a shift to the north and west, 50 to 100 miles or so, and it could be quite a, a different picture across uh, places along the I-95 corridor, and certainly to point south and, and east. As it stands now, accumulations are quite likely in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, uh, Thursday night, Friday, and, uh, including the Friday morning commute. It could uh, cause some uh, adverse effects on the Friday morning commute, so certainly threat for accumulating snow Thursday night into Friday from this uh, uh, dual low pressure system coming across the Ohio Valley and then reforming off the mid-Atlantic coastline. Let's now quickly jump ahead to the weekend just to take a look at that uh, clipper system. This is the Saturday morning forecast map from last night's Zero Z GFS model run. Here it is, a pretty healthy looking uh, uh, clipper system. Still in the cold air here across uh, Wisconsin, producing some snowfall over the Great Lakes region. Let's now jump ahead another 12 hours. And here we go, the forecast map for Saturday evening. And by this time, that clipper system throws some moisture right towards the I-95 corridor. Certainly can be some more snow Saturday night time frame, uh, give or take a few hours. Um, if not steady snow, just snow showers possible with this clipper system. This clipper system actually ends this cold shot that begins today. It'll go through uh, pretty much right through the upcoming weekend. Once that clipper system moves off the east coast early next week, the floodgates will open for much warmer air. We should reach 60 degrees by Tuesday up and down the I-95 car, and then potentially 70 degrees later next week. All that will set the stage for some severe weather outbreak down across the southeastern U.S. Uh, the middle part of next week, the latter part of next week, could even be a heavy rain event here in the I-95 corridor as it gets real warm towards the latter part of next week. But we, before we get there, we have some accumulating snow to deal with Thursday night and Friday, and then maybe a more of a nuisance snow in the Saturday night time frame before that warm surge reaches the eastern U.S. next week. Stay tuned to VentCoreWeather.com for possible updates later today and certainly tomorrow. I'm meteorologist Paul Orion.